Good morning and welcome to Wednesday, February 26th, 2020. And today's devotion is titled, The Promise of Christ's Return. And we'll be reading out of the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. So John 14, 1 through 3 reads, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. This passage is one of the most comforting passages in all of God's word. In the culture of the time when this was written, those listening to Jesus would have gotten this reference quickly. Upon a betrothal to a young lady, the betrothed groom would return to his father's house and begin preparations to live in marriage with his bride. Then, when the house was ready, the groom would come for his bride with great fanfare and celebration to reclaim her as his own. They would have a huge wedding celebration, and he would live with her from that point forward in the place he prepared. As we, we, as we work our way through the prophetic books, we see the clear fact that God's promises have come to pass. This one will as well. Jesus clearly pictures himself as the groom, making a place ready for the day he claims his bride. One day our eternal home will be ready, and our groom will come back to claim us. Then, as well, there will be a great fanfare, a great celebration, and we will be with our groom for eternity. There is another thing that would have been happening during this betrothal period. A bride would be making herself ready. She would make herself beautiful and keep herself pure for her groom. Our groom expects that of, of us as well. Are we staying faithful, making ourselves ready, and staying pure as we wait for our groom's return? And the final thought is, when the bridegroom comes, will we be ready or will we be caught unprepared? You know, there's a lot of events that occur in our life that we expect and we prepare for. And we take great pride in preparing for them and doing the best we can to make the best presentation that we can. Think, for example, if you go over in for a job interview, you're going to prepare yourself both physically, mentally, emotionally. You're going to get a good night's rest. You're going to get a good breakfast. You're going to get cleaned up. You're going to you know, shave, you're going to do, you know, wear your best outfit. You're going to make the best first impression that you can for that big interview date. And that's just an interview for a job. But think how much effort goes into that one moment. Now think about this. What about preparing for that day that the Lord returns to claim you as his own and take you to your eternal home? How well are you preparing for that? Because that is the most monumental moment that you'll ever experience. In your life and how prepared are you for it? are you prepared for it physically are you prepared for it emotionally mentally spiritually so that's what we have our time on earth to do we've got we've been given this time to prepare for that big day that big celebration and I would advise you to take full advantage of it and be as bet as more prepared as possible and that would obviously make the Lord very well pleased and do us well as we go into eternity with him. So I hope that's been encouraging to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I uh, look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.